let's talk about um, filler metals. So traditionally with SMAW on pipe, we run a 6010 root and 7018 caps on some high pressure um, applications where they run a higher strength steel. They might be a, um, an 8018 cap or they might even run a 7010 root. So higher tensile strengths to make, to go with the higher strength application. But usually still a 6010 E6010 and E7018 for our root and for our fill and cap, generally. And the industry standard is eighth inch on both of these. Um, you get away with running a, a 330 seconds root. Um, in the field, you're probably not gonna do that. They're gonna want you to actually get stuff accomplished. And what that means, you're probably gonna run an eighth inch. So get used to running it now. And on the well test, I've given people out in industry, you know, somebody comes in and they immediately start asking me for, you know, where's your little rod at? I'm thinking, well, is this guy going to be able to actually do the work? Okay, you know, they can't pass the test with the rod and ask the weld what they are on. That's a problem. I want to see him work with what I'm going to have him run. So, your mileage may vary. Um, for TIG, it's going to be um, ER70S2, usually, for mild steel applications. For stainless, it'll be um, 308 or 316, generally for 304 pipe. Um, your water tube will tell you all that stuff. For most TIG, I like 332. When I'm, for my root, when I'm doing my fill passes, I might go up to a bigger thing, like eighth of an inch, or I want to put some, put, want to put some welding fast, but 332 will get you there and go the whole way. Um, So, I'm going to redraw, redraw my giant pipe joint. Now let's talk about all the different passes, okay? There is the, the root, the hot pass, optional. There are fill passes, and then here there is your cap. So the root. So the purpose of the root is to fuse the two pieces together, provide a well on the inside of the pipe, and provide a a good enough service you can put your cap in over the top of it. So when I run a root, I want the inside of it to look like a well. Um, max reinforcement is an eighth of an inch on the inside of the pipe. So I can't be any more than an eighth of an inch from this surface to this, and I, I want enough weld in there that it doesn't try to crack out on me, so I want to put a nice weld in there, but this face on it right here isn't that important, because in the world of pipe they grind everything. So when I get done with my root, I'm going to look inside my pipe, see if it passes visual on the inside, and if it does, I'm going to grind out a big chunk of this um, root face. So I'm going to come with my grinder, make a nice, smooth surface to that will accept the fill pass. Um, hot pass. So hot pass is one of those terms that gets thrown around, and, and it doesn't a lot of times doesn't mean what people think it means. In the old days, the hot pass would be well, my root wasn't very good, so I'm going to crank my welder up and try to either clean out the crap I left in it or repair the problems I've got on the inside of the pipe. And Honestly, if you think it's going to clean anything out of the out of this face, you're wrong. That's what you got a grinder for. I have seen it used pretty effectively to fix um, problems on the inside of the pipe. If you don't have enough material, if you have what's called suck back, where it, it pulls material back up so you're underfilled on this, sometimes putting a nice big hot pass will uh, remelt that material and, and let it flow back down on the inside of the pipe. Or the other way, if you've got a little too much reinforcement, if when you run your root pass, you can get it nice and hot but not putting a lot of material doing it. Sometimes it'll heat it up and it'll pull it back and fix those conditions. Um, and it's, it's iffy. The, the key is to do a good route the first time. But the hot pass is available for you, but it won't clean stuff out. Use your grinder for that. So fill passes. Purpose of fill pass is to fill. 
Imagine that. Um, we want to fill this all the way up and pro provide a nice, flat, smooth, clean surface to put our, our cap on. So the problem we run into with this is the same with plate test as wagon tracks. Um, if I run my root and I don't grind it, and I've got some big old lump in here, when I weld over the top of this with 718, I'm going to have a giant slide inclusion right here and a giant slide inclusion right there because 718 will not get in there and dig that out. Um, 6010 probably won't either if, if it's bad. So that's why we grind to get rid of wagon tracks. So I've got that. I can put a nice 718 cap in there. And when I'm filling this out, I never want to put myself in a position where I've got a big angle coming in that's going to act like a wagon track. If I run my next pass way up here and it comes in sharp like that, I've got another sharp angle right there that's going to want to trap slag. Okay? So I want nice, smooth fill passes. And this is, you're not going to put welts in this small, but um, nice, smooth fill passes. And I don't want to, ideally, I don't want to burn off the edges of my joint before I get there because I want those nice straight lines to, to, to do my cap on. Give me a reference point. So the cap, our, the purpose of our cap is to provide a, a uniform um, surface that is free of stress rise that will cause failure in, in service, um, doesn't have a bunch of nasty bits on it that are going to be prone to corrosion. I want a nice smooth Cap. When I say stress riser, what I don't want is for this thing to be some big notch that's got a, a fairly square transition to the base metal. As stress flows through this pipe, and pipe has a lot of stress and people don't think about it, but it's always moving, it's always vibrating because of stuff going into it. If I've got sharp transitions at the toes of my cap, those are zippers. Those are going to crack at some point. That's where the weld failure is going to happen. So I don't want that. I want nice, smooth, good looking caps that even a pipe fitter can be proud of. That's what I want my weld to look like. Maximum reinforcement for this is the same as this eighth of an inch. Okay? Um, and the other thing too, pipe guys really love to weave stuff. We don't want to weave more than about two rod diameters. Weaves are bad. Um, People have done them for years, they've gotten away with them for years. The structural world is, you know, 15 years ago realized that they were really, really bad structurally. I guarantee you in 10 years, they will be verboten in all the pipe codes as well. So get out of the habit now. Um, you can do manipulations. Manipulation is not a weave. A weave is one giant snakeskin weave over the top of that, doing that all in one weld. We're not going to do that. that. That is against the code, we're not going to do it. Um, Positions. The last thing I'm going to talk about is welding positions. There's a lot of uh, misconceptions here. So in plate, we've got one, two, three, and four. With one being flat, two being horizontal, three being vertical, and four being overhead. Well, we've got some of those with pipe, but we don't have three and four. But we got a couple extras. So we've got one G, which is flat. And um, that is usually rolled. So the pipe is just like that, and it is rolled as we're welding it. So we've got our, our stick or our um, MIG gun. A lot of times this is done with MIG or flux core or metal core. MIG gun or a TIG torch and it's rolled, that's 1G. So 2G, 2G is this pipe. straight up and down. That's 2G, okay? Um, we don't have three, we don't have four, but we do have five, and that is um, the pipe in this position, but not rolled. That's 5G, and then, then the big guy is 6G. And that's that pipe at a 45 degree angle. And this, this, and this, that pipe does not move when we weld it. We've got to work around the pipe, not the other way around. So 
So that's 6G. As far as certification goes, 6G will get you all of them. 5G will get you one and two, but 6G is, is the standard. A five and a two will get you the same as a six, will get you all positions, but generally people just do the six because you do it all in one shot. Um, there's a lot of pipe welding. This video did not solve all of your problems, did not answer all of your questions, I'm sure. If you have more questions, go to me in the lab, get me online, and I'll answer them the best I can. Thanks.